Number two. <laughs> Hola. All right. Good being back again. Uh, Dino Delano, and we're going to be talking about Kundalini, Avatar, Evolution. All right. This is number four in the series, and maybe we'll wrap it up in, in this particular one. We'll see. All right. Uh, we've talked about how sexuality affects the process. We've touched on a little bit of things that you can do in order to undo a lot of these belief structures. One of the major ones that I should touch on is you can pull up, and right here on YouTube, can pull up EFT, which is Emotional Freedom Technique. Great technique for bringing about changes. You can uh, use Silver Mind Control. You can pull, also pull that up on the net. They have a great program. Uh, my book covers this in detail. Uh, one of my books, I should say, which is called Discover the Magic, right? And you can pull that up on uh, my website, which is uh, coolsandhealing.com. All right, let's go into it this way today. First of all, understand that enlightenment, cosmic consciousness, so on, kundalinis, these are a biological process. In other words, the process of becoming more aware, becoming enlightened, becoming cosmic conscious is a process that is biological. The kundalini process brings you through that experience. It brings about changes in the whole mind, body, nervous system. You notice that when I do this, I don't come on with, oh, and it's so holy, and uh, you'll reach the stars, and all of that kind of stuff is mostly foolishness, please. You know, this is an evolutionary process. This has nothing to do with religion per se. Religions have picked up on it. Religions use it. Religions uh, promulgate it, etc. And that's all fine and dandy. But understand that this happens with or without religion. This is not based on a religious process. Okay, enough of that. One of the major things that's going to happen to you as you go through the kundalini process is you are going to become more intuitive. This was so well portrayed in the movie Avatar, showing how the people connected their tails to the tree and uh, various things to the animal, to the dragon the, that flew, and how they were able to be, uh, become one with that, begin to bring through information. Through the Kundalini process, yes, you will begin to bring through information. One of, probably one of the best stories that I can tell you is a man by the name of George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was a botanist in the South. He developed over 300 uses for the peanut during a time when the South was really hurting financially, and it helped them bring them out of that. But when he was asked how he did it, he said, I talked to the peanut, and the peanut told me what to do. Now, a lot of people thought that he was being eccentric, foolish. It had nothing to do with that. What Carver was explaining in his own simple way was is that that process was intuitive. If you read the writings of Jonas Salk, the man who discovered the polio vaccine, or developed it, I sh probably should say, also he wrote much of that kind of ideas and understanding of how intuition played a major part. Albert Einstein also touched on this in a number of ways. We have inner knowledge. The kundalini process connects us in such a way that we begin to bring through that inner knowledge. You will become very creative in your own particular way. I myself have now published not only books, but I've published poetry. I've had some of it put on television. Um, I have a website of my photography from all over the world, which is sold in a number of different places. Uh, that's on Cool Zen Photo, by the way and uh, so on. So that creative process becomes very predominant in a person's life who has gone through and is going through this process. By the way, it's never ending. So when I say that it connects you back up, realize that that connection is an ongoing type of experience. 
Uh, you will get dreams, for instance. Uh, I use dreams quite a bit. I get dreams that sometimes tell me to take a particular vitamin or to drink a particular juice or to do something particular because the kundalini process is also very healing. Healing mentally, emotionally, physically. So when I've pointed out the Avatar movie so often in the sense of the, how they said, we'll see if we can bring you sane, that is a process of kundalini, is bringing us back to a point of sanity. We have to first realize and acknowledge that many of the ideas that we have been given, much of what we have been taught, is not only a lie, but it is also highly dysfunctional in the sense of how we interact with other humans, how we act within the world. Also through Kundalini, you're not going to become holy. In fact, you will find that you will lose self-importance. Self-importance begins to float down the stream. Self-importance is really born out of a sense of low self-esteem, a feeling of disconnection. With Kundalini, we become more connected. And in that process of deeper connection, we don't need that type of ego performance. I should uh, pass this on to you. One of the most important dreams that I had in this process was is that when I got involved with uh, Jensen Jiu-Jitsu, you can pull that up on the internet also, by the way, Tai Chi Cha, which was developed by Justin Stone, when I got involved in those types of process, I had a dream that said I would be milking the cobra. Now think about that for a moment, because in Kundalini, the main symbol is the cobra. Milking the cobra means that I was now taking the poison out of the energy. It is the poison within those energy structures that causes the chaotic process that people go through while going through this experience. What is poison is the belief systems. That's correct. Many of the belief systems that we take on are not only dysfunctional, but they are also highly toxic. That toxicity, tox <laughs> toxicity needs to be worked out, needs to be released, needs to be let go of. Guilt is a toxic process. Feelings of guilt of, say, simple things like nudity. I mean, did you ever know anyone that was born with clothes on? So when we begin to think in those ways, we begin to realize that so much of our belief structures and our attitudes are really a form of nonsense. Uh, anyway, so lucid dreaming. Oh, by the way, you can, you can pull up a book. You can still find it out there, I'm sure, by Dr. Ann Faraday called Dream Games. It will not tell you what dreams mean because those books are nonsense but it will show you, it will give you processes and experiences how to work out your own dreams. Imagine having your own ability to be able to work out your own metaphors, to begin to understand what that inner being has been trying to tell you. Wow! I mean, it's really wonderful when you begin to experience this. Before 9-11, I had a dream that it was going to happen, so it was not a surprise to me. In fact, the day <coughs> after it happened, what I felt more than anything was is that we were not innocent, that we had brought this upon ourselves. That's a whole nother story. So when it comes to things like, quote, prophecy, basically really what's happening to us as individuals is we become more connected. We begin to know what's taking place in our environment, what is coming about, and yes, there are going to be some major changes environmentally. And that's just part of what's going on. Okay, good at been being with you again. Please pull up my website, which is called coolzenhealing.com. There's two books on there, one which is on Kundalini, and also the other one, which is called Discover the Magic, which will give you an enormous amount of processes and things to work with while going through the Kundalini process. All right, good being with you again. Dino Delano.